On the DMT One to One Show episode 10, I feature on Gobbler. It's uh, great to be here on the DMT One to One Show with uh, Chris Kantrowitz, the CEO of the company uh, Gobbler. So, hi, Chris, and how's it going? Good. How you doing? Great. Thank you. All good. It's uh, uh, another muggy day here in London. I've heard that uh, in LA it's uh, pretty warm, so I'm quite jealous. Uh, but it's all good. Uh, so you know, I want to hear all about Gobbler. I think that uh, I actually came across the company for the first time at South by Southwest. Uh, so uh, and it's, it sounds great because uh, of course uh, everybody struggles with the, the management of their their uh, media files, uh, especially when they're working on music. So tell us first of all what is Gobbler and and uh, what is the company do? Um, you know, Gobbler really is a, a platform designed to enable workflows for folks that record audio. Um, and the idea really came to be about four years ago. I used to design concerts and um, with a lot of really well-known artists like Lenny Kravitz, Stevie Wonder, Beyonce, and it was kind of a crazy time. Um, and what I started to notice in the work was that you know, there are a lot of problems with digital workflows, um, whether it's photo, audio, video, you know, from the standpoint of like, being able to properly back up and version your work, being able to collaborate, being able to organize your stuff. And there's a lot of great cloud products out there like Dropbox and SugarSync and Box, but they weren't really designed for workflows that have, let's say, like a session file and thousands of associated files with it. They're great yeah. if you're you know, syncing a PowerPoint presentation or JPEG, you know, single, single item type situations. Um, and, you know, Gobbler, I mean, when it first really got started, one of the people that I work with um, had a major... Um, meltdown of one of their hard drives and this is a huge 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 rock star and it's like you know where's your backup and he didn't have one and I thought that's kind of crazy because this guy is one of the most meticulous people I've ever met and he can afford not to have this problem and I thought well if he's having this problem that means anybody who's doing this kind of work is having this problem and the reality is is his work is no more important than a student's I mean it, yeah. what, it may not have the same financial value but it certainly has artistic value and sentimental value so you know I started Gobbler really just as a tool for some friends. Uh, but then as we got into it, we realized that this really is a huge problem. And, um, and you know, everyone has horror stories of, you know, I couldn't send the file because there was a file size limitation or it was too slow or, you know, my hard drive crashed, my hard drive got stolen. I mean, I remember last year Skrillex had his hard drive stolen yeah. from his, from his uh, hotel room and boom, like a year's worth of work on. And just think, wow, I mean, with today's infrastructure, there's no reason for anyone to have these problems. And the reality is, is it's not because these people aren't smart. It's just because solutions haven't been made that fit directly into their workflows. Because you want these solutions not to be in your face. You want to be able to sort of like press a button and forget it. So, so Gobbler you know, sort of exists to help solve that problem. Yeah. And the company uh, also has a, you know, a f one of the, the main things that I noticed uh, when I first uh, got on the site was that you support a huge number of, of different, uh, you know, uh, of software and, and and you know music making uh, products. So uh, so how do you did you start on the product on, on on Gobbler? What did you support at the beginning, and how did you expand that support to to a variety of different or different well, potential workflows? Really, sure. So yeah, so that's actually one of the things that I think you know really differentiates us is that. We're constantly trying to figure out, you know, where the pain points are for individual types of workflows, whether, you know, you're doing EDM music or you're doing pop music or you're doing classical music and whether you're using, you know, any number of DAWs that are out there. Um, you know, every DAW has slightly different workflows. They have slightly different features, you know. And so what we do is we're constantly trying to, like, make, you know, Gobbler seem as transparent as, as possible. So, for example, sure. we're now integrated into Pro Tools, and to send a project with Gobbler, you can literally just pull the menu down, hit send, and it's all done via the Pro Tools app. And for us as a company, our you know our mission is actually to work more closely with all of these companies so that they can basically create the cloud experience that their users need. So we actually have an API that we've provided to a number of companies who are in the process of actually integrating Gobbler into their own apps and deciding like what are the best features for their particular users and also to give them the opportunity to design the interface as they think their customers see fit. I mean, I would say for us, like, you know, we've built an interface for Gobbler, but the, but the ultimate experience that people will have with Gobbler is when they experience Gobbler within the software that they're actually creating. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, uh, 
infrastructurally, like, uh, of course, it's, it's, a, it's quite a challenge because, uh, as you said, there's, there's so many different types of music project and they can be, you know, very, not, not very data intensive at all if it's all based on, you know, MIDI and, and uh, sort of uh, samples and stuff, or, or it can be hugely data, data intensive if you are uh, working on, on a lot of audio recordings. So uh, how does that fit into, uh, you know, a, a workflow, for example, you know, if, you, if you're having to back up gigabytes of data at a time? Right. Well, um, you know, Gobbler, we spend a lot of time with the product, you know, figuring out ways to send the least amount of data possible. Um, so, you know, one part of our infrastructure is that, you know, we're able to um, hash and recognize individual files. So, for example, if you've, you know, uploaded a file into the system already and then you're using the same file in a completely different project, you don't have to re-upload it again. Or, you know, if you're using, let's say, you know, widely available samples, you know, if they're already in the system, you won't have to re-upload them. Um, Gobbler also um, looks at the type of file that you're trying to upload and determines the best type of lossless compression for it. So whether it's right. audio compression or just straight data compression, or if a file's already compressed, we don't recompress it because that actually makes files bigger. Um, so, you know, you know, we can't solve the problem of one's bandwidth, but we can really help course, eliminate yeah. a lot of da redundant data being sent by just being smart about that. Yeah. And also, um, you know, there's ways, for example, one of the things that we recommend for people with Gobbler is when you start a project, the first thing you should do is start backing it up. Because then what happens is Gobbler is just backing up, you know, in the background. And by the time you're done with your project, it's already up there. And yeah. which is also nice for when you go to send a project, because if it's already up there, having saved it, when you go to send it to one of your collaborators, it sends instantly. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that we've done with Gobbler, which you know, is, I think one of the things that makes us a little bit more unique, is that you know you can set Gobbler to have an awareness of whether you're actually recording or not, so that if you're recording, Gobbler actually pauses in the background to give you access to all of your system resources. So we're thinking about these little things that make all the difference for people in workflows because it it, do, it is great that you can have something like this running in the background. So if you do have a catastrophic catastrophic failure or if you're working on a massive project and when you're done, you, you don't like now you don't like have to wait to then upload the project when you're finished. You can literally yeah. send it instantly, and in a lot of cases, save hours and hours and hours of production time because it's already there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's no, it's, it's a very exciting uh, product because uh, I mean I was working at the archives at Universal for for uh, for a time, and uh, it was uh, it was always uh, challenging to to manage the the. The projects as you know hard drives and storing them and, and all that, all that sort of work and to have a redundant backup in the cloud of of every single project that would be pretty pretty awesome but uh, on in terms of uh, uh, the length of storing a project so do, do you find a uh, gobbler would be also a solution for long-term storage of projects or would you recommend it more for for uh, short to medium term yeah I mean the the storage that we currently have with gobbler is a little bit more expensive yeah, uh, because of its redundancy and its speed. Um, so we always say to people that the current version of Gobbler is the Gobbler that you should use when you're either in production on a particular project or set of projects or something that you feel like you might touch over the next month, a couple of months. Yeah, um, we are working on a much longer term, less expensive archival storage, um, and it, it should be out relatively soon. But along with just the storage part, we're also working on a lot of metadata related things because you know I think one of the problems with um, with uh, storage is that if you don't store it with the right data associated with it, just because you store it doesn't mean you really solved any problems. You've got to no. be able to associate it with a, you know, a number of different metadata touch points. And so um, we're working with you know, a couple of the standards bodies um, so that when we do give the option to do longer term storage, it can be done in such a way where that, that, that data can be viable you know, 25 years from now. Yeah, yeah and I think everybody's experienced that it works with music, uh, having a, a bunch of final sets of masters or final sets of files. This is the really final one and then yeah. you start sort of juggling whether it's this is the final final one or the final 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 and really which one is the correct one and yeah. Yeah. And, and so that one thing one thing that we're, we've done with Gobble to help solve that problem is instead of actually having to have each and every folder like that, the way Gobbler's versioning works is um, it just snapshots date and time so it, it's only one folder and then if you want to recreate that project from that particular date and time, you can just hit the button and Get it there, so you don't have like right. like you have like 
12 different versions of the same thing, you can, it can actually help you to consolidate a lot of your data. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so talking about mobile, uh, it's yeah. uh, an interesting space because, you know, you have companies like Audiobus, for example, now that are allowing interoper interoperability between apps. Yeah. Uh, and also you have different apps that uh, all do different things, but also store the files in, in their own special way. You know, sometimes you can sync it through iTunes and stuff like that. Uh, but it would be really cool to have a centralized way of backing that up. Do you think that that would be something that may be possible at some point with, uh, with Gobbler? Yeah, that's definitely coming. I mean, we, we have a mobile app now that's what I'd call OK. Yeah. Um, right now, it lets you send anything that's backed up into your cloud remotely. So if you're, like, let's say if you're working on a project and you forgot to send it to somebody, you can hit a button and send it. But we're working on a pretty extensive uh, API for mobile so that you can awesome. do a wide variety of things, including, you know, syncing projects. Uh, and then we've got some other pretty neat ideas uh, that we're working on to really make the mobile experience really robust for people so that you know they can have access to you know a good amount of their data uh, even when they're on the road yeah yeah it's great it's, it's really cool because uh, yeah uh, i think that's one of the biggest uh, gripes i have with uh, the ipad uh, fantastic ipad apps that are out at the moment it's just that the, the, the backup is so inconsistent between them and the way you export the files that it's, it becomes a little bit difficult to navigate through all of them uh, yeah well, uh, that's great. And uh, also, uh, talking about the name Gobbler, of course, there isn't a, a specific uh, notion of music uh, involved uh, as part of the name. So I was wondering whether uh, you may be looking at, for example, uh, you know, doing a similar thing for, for movie projects or, for, or uh, for, for the video side of things as well. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, what we definitely find is that, you know, people that record audio also do photography and video and a wide variety of other things. And so, yeah. you know, I wouldn't, discount the notion that over time Gobbler will you know, expand it out in terms of its feature set because I, I think it's important for people to try to unify their data as much as they can. Yeah. I think that um, you know, Gobbler would be a cloud along with some other cloud that people have. I, I kind of think that people are going to have two clouds in their lives, one which is sort of like a basic general purpose kind of cloud like what a Dropbox would be for you and then you'll have a business slash hobby cloud that's designed much more towards the kinds of things that you know you're doing that require a little bit more attention than just sort of like basic data uh, management. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And at the moment, are you seeing a lot of uh, you know professional clients, of course, uh, so, so uh, big artists and studios and, and stuff like that. But, but are you also getting a lot of uh, uh, sort of grassroots uh, people joining the service uh, and maybe uh, through f perhaps uh, features on, on on specialized audio magazines or anything like that? Yeah, well, that's kind of the neat thing is, you know, we, we have a really nice mix of both, you know, some yeah. of the biggest artists in the world and then, you know, people that are just getting their start. And that's kind of what we've always wanted for Gobbler is uh, we wanted to build a product that the pros could use, but at the same time, create something that, you know, anyone who's getting started um, can have a very similar experience for. So, um, you know, we spend a lot of time looking at places outside of just the professional circles um, to figure out, A, what these folks are looking for, and B, how we can make their creative process better. Because for me, you know, managing files is really boring. It's not creative. And the reality is, is my hope with Gobbler is that we can eliminate that from people and so they can just make a lot of you know, great music or whatever they're working on and not have to worry about like, where their files are, if they're protected, can they collaborate. You know, we want to make it so it's, you can just close your eyes and dream and not worry about you know, moving data around. Exactly, and, and and also uh, who knows what what the future holds in terms of the way software I is going? Because of course, if we're looking at uh, companies like Photoshop, they're moving towards a, a more subscription-based uh, yep. uh, services. And if audio software was to move in a similar direction, then it would make it uh, even more important to have uh, a really great backup of of the files that you have. And uh, one more thing, but just on the EDM side, and on you know people that are working a lot with samples and and, and MIDI stuff. Yep. Uh, how do you how do you see them backing up their their own files and is there enough awareness of for example bouncing down uh, the the audio and the mix downs of some of the stuff so that they can have it without for example having to resort to set, resetting the whole plugin and having that available at all times and and do people do people are people aware of having to do that? Well, today to get the most out of Gobbler, you do have to do a save collect. Yeah. Um, but we we are working on something um, that should eliminate that. And, uh, and a lot of it's inspired by um, some of the folks in EDM that you know, have been longtime users, um, you know, some of the sort of thought leaders in the space uh, we've been working with for quite some time, along with the, the software companies that create these tools. Um, you know, my hope, uh, and it, it's not even a hope, I mean, it's, it's, it's in the works, it's being specced out, 
um, that um, you won't have to move any of your work anywhere. That you know, Gobbler will recognize the project and then handle the files as they should be. And I would expect to see some, to see this done, you know, in a matter of months. I mean, it's it's okay. it's already working in Gobbler in a limited way. So the architecture's there, and now it's just kind of working more closely with the companies about you know how it manifests itself. But it's 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 one of our top priority. Um, initiatives because it goes back to the same thing I just said, which is we don't want people to have to worry about their files. We can do that for them. And, yeah. and this is definitely one of those things that, you know, that, that will help that, I think, a lot. Absolutely, absolutely. That's great. Well, I would encourage uh, our listeners to go and check out gobbler.com. And if they go on gobbler.com slash plans, they'll have an overview of all the different plans available on the platform, which is, uh, which is great. And, yeah. Uh, uh, one of that, the things yeah. to do, um, the, Sorry to interrupt you, but we're doing sure. this thing called Gobblerama right now where we're giving away uh, $10,000 in prizes um, up to the end of this month. And we've got a lot of really nice prizes that, are being, that we're giving out. So um, right. if you want, you know, sign up for a free account, invite your friends, and uh, enter for a chance to win a ton of great things. So good time to start. Awesome. That's great. Well, thanks so much for your time. And yeah. uh, again, gobbler.com. Uh, go check it out. And uh, uh, until next week. If you enjoyed the show, remember to check out our weekly music tech news show on digitalmusictrends.com.